All right, hey, I'm back, and this is part two of my DIY ultralight video slider series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to motorize your ultralight camera slider by adding a small but powerful DC motor and a precision motor controller. Now, if you haven't watched the first video in this series, I'm going to recommend that you go back and have a look at that because we're sort of going to be picking up where we left off. Alright, so just a quick note before we get started. Uh, we are going to be building a motorized camera slider for live action camera shots. This is not for time lapse, although with the proper electronics you could very easily convert this for time lapse use. Uh, I'm just not a huge time lapse guy. I don't know what you would need to make that work. Uh, so I'm going to leave that to the pioneering time lapse guys out there. Um, so Matt, Bruno, Looking at you guys. Alright, so even with the addition of all of the extra components with the motor and the battery and the controller, this two foot slider still comes in under three pounds. It weighs two pounds, 13 ounces. Now considering what it can hold and what it can do, I'm really happy with that. So let's go ahead and get started with our build. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is print a new version of the slider carriage that will allow us to attach a belt to it. This new carriage is printed without a thumbscrew brake because the braking force of the motor that we're going to use is plenty for what we'll need. I've also added these holes on the other side through which we'll insert 348 by half inch socket cap screws with nuts on the other side for attaching the belt to the carriage. But we also have to drill holes through the linear bearing in the middle. So just use the carriage holes as a pilot and use a 332nd drill bit to drill out the bearings. I recommend drilling very slowly or even twisting the drill bit by hand to avoid melting the plastic. With the holes drilled, you can then insert the screws and add nuts on the other side. So that's it for the carriage for now, we're going to come back to it later. So if you haven't guessed already, the belt for our slider will run inside of the slot in the extrusion. And these are the pieces that we'll need to mount a pulley on one end. This particular pulley is a 10 tooth 6mm bore pulley from Servo City. Alongside it are the two pieces that will form the spindle. The spindle rod is intentionally printed slightly oversized, so I just use a piece of sandpaper to bring it down to a precise diameter. With everything ready, we can mount these pieces to the slider. Both the top and bottom plates attach using a quarter 20 by 3 8 inch screw and T-nut. Slide the T-nuts into the rail first, and then mount the bottom part of the spindle. Then you can attach the top, making sure that the top of the spindle rod is seated in the corresponding recess. I print these pieces solid, but I still make sure not to over tighten the screws. Now I do have an end cap that fits over everything and attaches with the same number 6 screws we used on our carriage, but for now I'm going to leave it off until we loop our belt around, which is what we're going to do next. For this two foot slider, we're going to need 51 and a half inches of the XL timing belt that I got from Servo City. Take a sharp blade and shave the last tooth off of each end. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's not going to be, but it just has to be flat enough for a nut to be able to bite down. Once that's done, you can use a 332 drill bit to drill a hole through the middle of the belt. It's not going to make a neat hole, but it works. So now we can go ahead and attach one end of the belt to the slider carriage using the tiny screws we've added. It can be a little tricky and you're going to need some patience, but I promise it will go on. Needle nose pliers can be very helpful for this part. Once one side of the belt is attached to the carriage, we're going to start feeding the belt through the rail until it comes out the other side and then feed it back the other way until we have both ends sticking out the same side. Then we can attach the other end of the belt to the carriage and complete the loop.
So now we've reached the motor end of the slider. After reviewing and testing several different motors, I decided on a 45 RPM spur gear motor that is very powerful, reasonably fast, and fairly quiet. But before I place it in the motor mount, I'm going to wrap it with a thin layer of insulation tape, which will help attenuate some noise. I'm still trying to find uh, an optimal method for sound insulation, and my next experiment may be to try some acoustic caulk to seal some of the smaller joints. But once the foam is on the motor, we can place the motor into the mount and fasten it using two M3 by four millimeter screws. All right, so we're now at the electronics portion of the build. After threading these four inch bullet connectors through the motor cap, I can connect them to the leads on the motor using crimp terminals. Eventually, I'll probably just end up soldering these on just because it makes a stronger connection. My motor cap has a very close fit, so it generally stays in place with friction alone, but you could also add a very small dab of epoxy for some extra holding power. The last thing we'll do is add another pulley to the motor using the included set screw. This is the same pulley we used on the opposite side. With the motor mount complete, we can attach it to our slider using a quarter 20 by half inch screw. This method of attachment creates a very simple way for adjusting tension on the belt, simply by moving the motor in or out along the rail. Good tension is very important for vertical shots in order to avoid having the belt teeth skip on the pulleys. Now that's really the end of the build. Uh, the last portion that I'm going to cover here essentially involves using off-the-shelf components to create the controller. I haven't yet found a better option for motor control than the Servo City Digital Manual Speed Controller. And as far as I can tell, this is your best bet for foolproof, ultra-precise control of your motor. I clipped the extra battery wires that normally come out at the top, and I'm powering the unit with a 12-volt battery tray that holds 8 AA batteries. I've also soldered in longer bullet connectors. These are 36 inches, but you can just as easily use extensions to create whatever length you need. And on the back, all I've done is add some Velcro to keep the battery tray and controller together. So whenever you want to use your slider, just plug the controller into the motor and you're off and running. The carriage is being moved by a motor, so the motion is very smooth and very consistent. I really prefer using a motor for slider shots because I can concentrate much more on the action in the shot rather than desperately trying to stabilize the movement of my hands as I push the carriage along. Okay, so the very last thing we're gonna do here is add a little end cap on the pulley side. This cap gives everything a finished look and is actually strong enough to serve as a foot for angled shots. And like I said before, it attaches with the same number six screws we used on our carriage. All right, so I was pretty rushed getting all of this filmed, but I wanted to throw in just a little demo footage of the slider being used in the most challenging orientation, which is vertically. Uh, you're gonna have to excuse the video quality here because I have my A7S II and Canon 24 to 70 on the slider, along with a Benro leveling head and a Manfrotto mini ball head. Altogether, the weight of everything on the carriage is about five pounds. And I'm just using my hand to hold the tripod down because it's a cheap little Benro and it would fall over if I let it go. So I hope this shows you that the motor is plenty strong and I especially like that the braking force of the motor is strong enough to hold the camera in place even vertically. So this is totally usable for a vertical time-lapse scenario where shoot, move, shoot is required. All right, my friends, that is it for this build. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I put a lot of time into coming up with the concept for this, so I hope it allows you to go out and do things that you've never done before. Um, I'm sure there are a ton of things that I left out. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and also let me know if you just enjoyed watching it and you want to see more projects like this in the future. So comment, subscribe, uh, just let me know so I can make sure to bring you uh, 
uh, my next project here on YouTube. So that's it for now. This is really entertaining. Peace.